Okay, hi everyone. This is Raji and Susan. I'm Susan, this hi. is Raji. <laughs> and we are on week three of neuroplasticity. Um, some really exciting things are happening for Raji. Last week we um, went over the cse do as far as she was gonna intentionally tell herself, okay, we're gonna walk with two legs now, right? Instead of the one leg. And so what's really fascinating is Raji got on with me this morning before we started this. And she said that she used to try to walk one leg at a time. And then at some point, and she doesn't know when, it just became easier to swing both legs through with her crutches or her braces at the same time. And so she doesn't even remember that happening. Her brain took over. Remember how we said the left leg will start to assume the functions of the right leg. And so it's exactly what happened to her brain. So she's intentionally been trying over the last week to separate the legs again and try to feel like it's what it's like with two, but her brain keeps tripping her up. It's like, mm -hmm. she's so used to walking with the one leg that she's having to really focus, slow down, intentionally move that other leg. So we're gonna watch you walk for a second with both. I mean, yep. how you have been walking and then what you tried to, to do yep. on the variation. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Let me, you guys can see that, right? Yep. So actually uh, you need to, hey Raji, can you tilt it down a little further? We can't really yeah. see the bottom of your legs. That's better. Okay. So yeah, I've been walking like really lazy with like, well, the crutches and then my legs <laughs> so no idea because when you get around faster yes because i well yes exactly so it's yeah it's a lot easier and faster apparently for me so then i used to have a walking pattern where i would step with my left leg and then kind of just swing through with my right leg and that pattern obviously i don't know when i changed it but i did at some point so like it's kind of hard because I also kind of do like almost a hopping motion or I don't know. It's like I step and then I kind of like, I think it's more like that, like almost like, like I'm trotting, I guess. <laughs> so. so, so what's happening is her brain is fighting itself. It's fighting with the ease of just going quick, swinging both legs through. That's, because, that's movement. So you see when I like kind of step and then like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like what it is. So we want to intentionally slow down when you can during the day and get that right leg engaged again, mentally, internally and externally saying, mm -hmm. okay, like we're going to move forward, watching your leg move forward so that we can regain those connections. And these neurons, these little dendrites, they connect with intention, like every 21 days, if we have an intention and we're like, right leg, move, 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 right leg, move. It's going to start connecting and it's going to take time, mm -hmm. but why not practice every day? Mm -hmm. And why not see what improvements you can make and how it can affect your life. And you said that you have been doing the work and that you've been, what's been happening. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's very slow, obviously, I think anything that you um, are trying to do um, is always very minuscule um, in, in growth, but even several years ago, when I um, had gone out to get the um, specific braces, which next time maybe we can, I can put those on and I'll show those braces. Um, so you guys can get an idea what I'm talking about. But I, um, you know, wasn't wasn't completely convinced that those braces were really gonna uh, give me growth and in my in my right leg, but over, so I got those, I think it was like 2014 and now we're in 2020. And so I literally had like no glutes at all. I mean, my, my you know, but <laughs> my buttocks was like really just non-existent pretty much. And, and now I have, I actually have, you know, um, substantial growth there. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and then, um, as well, like now that I've been really intentional and in my meditations and visualizations, I, 
notice the bigger difference um, just in the last couple of days is that I, a lot of times before only felt um, any sort of sensation between my hip and my, my right hip and my knee. And now, and occasionally I would feel like some nerve uh, um, or motion or, or I guess some internal, I don't know, I guess it was like nerve um, function, I guess, uh, in my foot. But now just like I said today and uh, when I was doing my meditation this morning and um, the other day, I felt more, uh, not really the other day, but I would say this morning for sure, I felt more from like the knee to, to my foot on my right side. So what she's talking about is just her internal eye, her brain trying to get back into her leg again and feeling a little bit of those neurons going by thought and intention. Oh, there's a leg here. Oh, there's a leg here. And they might be firing all strange and weird, but her brain is reconnecting to that leg. So it's super cool. And I just wanted to go over some science with you guys today to kind of um, educate you a little bit more on these tools that your brain can use. So we are gonna go back to this see, say, do slide. And is this coming up correctly? It is. Yep. Okay. So last week we talked about using our memory, our imagination and our visualization, kind of know where we were in space. And then I had Raji speak out loud, right? Mm -hmm. So we have our five senses. We see, hear, move, taste, touch. And those first three, the see, saying, and doing are the most powerful when it comes to neuroplasticity to get things to change and move. So I want you guys to do an exercise with me. So we're gonna just go through internal versus external tools that our brain has. So Raji, I don't know if you need to sit down or what, but I'm gonna have us close our eyes and we're gonna to go to the C first. So as you're closing your eyes, um, see a memory of a Christmas tree or Hanukkah, I'm not sure what holiday, but picture a holiday that you can remember and just see that memory, okay? For any memory that you really want to. And the idea I'm trying to get across is you can close your eyes and you can visualize a memory. Mm -hmm. So that's with our sight. Now we're gonna move over to listening to ourselves and our internal eye for that. So we're gonna go to Tell yourself, today I'm gonna to get all my stuff done. So close your eyes, close your mouth, and just think that thought. And you can hear your thought internally in your brain. You can hear that you're making that thought, right? So now as you close your eyes, I want you to physically look inside your body and I want everybody to go down to their lungs and take a deep breath and actually visually see your lungs inside your body expanding and contracting with your internal eye. You can take your internal eye down to your stomach and just check in with your stomach and see, wow, is it empty? Is it full? Is it settled? Is it grumbly? How's your stomach doing internally? And if you have any pain inside your body, you can internally take your eye, like my right hip is hurting a little bit right now. So I'm just internally going down and inside my thoughts and my body and looking at that hip and I'm resonating where that pain is. It's like right in between my joint. So you can open your eyes now. And was that pretty easy for you to do all three of those exercises? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you- I, Well, I think the, hard, the harder one was the internal, I think. The internal kinesthetic where you're internally mm -hmm. looking inside your body? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's just something you probably haven't done very much, but it's mm -hmm. like, 
if you're even sensing anything inside your body, like your heartbeat, your mm -hmm. feelings, heartbreak, you know, you can feel that inside, it's inside your body. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we went from the memory to listening to a thought to inside looking at our lungs breathing. Okay. So now we have the external ability to do that as well. So if I were to watch somebody else walk and I'm not able to walk as efficiently, my brain will look at that person. And if I'm intentionally going, okay, body, watch how that's being done. Then I can create that in my mind by visually externally stimulating it. It's like you watch somebody learn how to tie a knot and then you're like, oh, okay, now I know what to do. And your brain records that and creates the action. Auditorily, we self-speak externally. So if I were to say, oh my gosh, Susan, you've got to get that screen fixed today. That's an external voice. And my ears and my brain are hearing myself speak at my own vibration, which is the most powerful voice to myself in the universe is my vibration, my voice coming back into my ears. So then we have external motor where I'm like, move my hand, move my hand, I'm moving my hand. So three internals, three externals. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we actually have six tools now that we can kind of understand, combine together and create this really powerful synergistic effect with our brains to make our bodies do what we want it to do. It's like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so here's a little picture of cell speak. And there's been scientific studies that have been done where if we're using all of these together, so I'm visualizing my two legs walking normally I'm speaking out loud is more powerful than the inside voice. So I'm speaking out loud and we were doing that a little bit last week. Okay, legs, let's, you know, let's walk right, left, right, left, or whatever we need to say to ourselves to kind of intentionally make that happen. Mm -hmm. And then kinesthetically, we're looking at that motor activity going on. You can see this is a copy of a brain here that I've put up on the screen. Can you see the screen? Did I share it? Yep. Okay. I see it. So the left picture is silently saying an animal's name in our brain and the right picture is saying it out loud. So when you can see how much more lights up, but when we think, if we see, we say, we do, that's why we kind of make it easy, see, say, do. Every single executive function of your entire brain lights up. So the whole brain lights up when we move, we speak, and we intend all together. So it's scientifically proven that when you're doing that, you're going to experience change faster than if you were to think about it as a thought or to sit in your chair and not move or whatever. It's this mm -hmm. combination of the three together. So I'm going to do a little meditation today, and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, I'd really like you to sit down yeah, I was gonna, I'm gonna sit. So, yeah. because this is going to be a really powerful exercise and I want everybody to be able to tap into this at any given time. So the other thing about our brains is the best way for us to learn the quickest is for us to be in the parasympathetic nervous system. So if we're stressed out, if we're in fight or flight mode, we're not able to learn as well or as efficiently as if we're completely relaxed. So with all of these tools, the C say do, I'm gonna teach you how to get into the parasympathetic nervous system so that your brain can light up all at once. And we're gonna fast forward this healing. And I have a separate meditation that I will put up that's gonna take this into a much deeper um, experience, but I just want to give you a snapshot of it today because I don't want us to take up too much time. So, okay, everybody go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep inhale. And on the exhale, I want you to all say out loud, just drop. Out loud, Raji, I want to hear you say, just drop. Just drop. Drop body. 
drop body. So start at the top of your head and just melt like lava or like a big bowl of jello. Just let gravity take hold of you and just sink into it and let all your muscles, ligaments, everything just be super heavy. And just breathe and drop. Drop body, drop. Drop body, drop. Relax. No pain. You're just really heavy. It's like you're a bag of bones all mixed in a pile. Drop, drop, drop. Heavy. Relax. Just let go. Okay, now open your eyes and tell me if you could feel your own matter just becoming more open, relaxed, and heavy. Heavy, yeah. Do you feel that? Like so a you lot. Can, yeah, and I'll do a longer meditation that everyone can do. But because our brains live in fight or flight so much of the time, we're on the go, 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 and we're thinking about what we got to get done. And, you know, we're stressed out about so many different things, especially now in 2020 with <laughs> pandemic and election. And if we can just tap into that drop on a moment's notice, whether we're arguing with somebody, whether we just got sideswerped and you know almost got in an accident or somebody triggered us somehow, if we can just take a deep breath and feel that gravity relaxation drop, it's like the word out loud is very powerful to say just drop. And then you just give yourself a moment and then you can respond in a much more powerful way because your brain has blood flow to it and you're not just going to be triggered to yell or scream or react. You're going to just be able to heal. You're going to be able to relax. You're going to be able to deal with the situation much more effectively because your brain is actually working rather than trying to escape. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So now with all of these tools that we learned today, it's kind of a lot that I packed in in a little bit of time. I want you to keep doing what you're doing and say, okay, right leg, walk, walk. But I want you to incorporate that drop, drop, walk, walk, because it's gonna open your nervous system up. It's gonna relax it and it's gonna let those neurons connect that much more effectively. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The combination of relaxing, intending, and speaking out loud. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing the, when I'm walking outside and intentionally talking to my right leg, saying right leg move or right leg walk, how does that, I guess what, like when I say that versus like, you know, drop, how does that correlate? You can just say it all together. I just want you to, to really notice that you're relaxing as you're doing this, you're being patient and kind with yourself and encouraging you're slowing down it's not like you're like okay come on we're gonna work this out leg and you're gonna go and you're gonna walk and we're gonna intend this and you're gonna go totally the, the opposite you're gonna get in your body and you're like okay leg let's try this out let's drop let's relax and let's walk drop relax and walk and walk you don't have to say drop and relax all the time but I want you to just be very conscious that you're in that relaxed mode. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's totally different than going for a workout. Yeah. So healing is 50% engagement where you're working and 50% disengagement. So you really have to, we're retraining your brain mm -hmm. to reconnect and to relax because most of us are not in those states. You've ignored your leg and you've been trying to run around, get your life done. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to back up and we're going to pay attention to our leg in the relaxed state. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's week three. Do you have any questions, my dear? Um, I think the part that I struggle with the most is the um, internal visual, visual visualization. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, if there's um, something that can help with that. Okay. So let's it, do that next week. That's a really good point. And what we'll okay. do is we'll get a picture of the leg and all the muscles and how they look and work. And then that will help you actually see what you have on your body. Okay. And then you can start to see how the muscles, you know, need to move. Okay. And that'll help connect to that internal eye. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye, sounds everyone. good. Thanks for watching.